Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen, children of a lesser god, household pets, both foreign and domestic, and anyone else who hasn't changed the channel yet. My name is Thaddeus Gibson Santini Mecklenburg, ruler of the outer universe and no one's shoeshine boy. Sorry, I meant that I'm filling in for Stevie D. He's on vacation right now. <clears throat> oh, I guess there's more. You know, the producers don't <laughs> want me to speak for a very long time for fear of me saying something stupid and inappropriate. Have I yet? I guess not. Anyway, today I have two very reputable guests who haven't been charged with any crimes yet that are going to ask me, Thaddeus, Stevie D's temporary replacement, if Stevie D actually does have pubic hair or is it just a dirty rumor? So... These two distinguished individuals will ask me 20 questions, and I will try to answer them as Stevie D would. Basically, Gallup did a poll about 10 years ago and asked a basic question. Who is Stevie D? Now, although it was subsequently locked in a vault in the Carpathian Mountains of Romania during a pro Ceausescu revolt, people remembered and still wanted to know. Hence... Tonight's episode will focus mainly on Stevie D, his life, achievements, and non-criminal record. So let's meet our esteemed guests. Hailing from the western provinces of Outer Mongolia, please welcome Estelle Gibbons Martinelli. Estelle? Thank you for the very cold welcome, Thaddeus Gibson Santini Mecklenburg. And thank you also to the very few of you who haven't switched channels yet, like Stevie D said. The people of Outer Mongolia, who I represent, are going to be eternally grateful for that. But unlike what uh, Thaddeus Sartorini Mettenberg said just now, my name is actually Estelle Gibbons Martinelli. It is Henrietta Dunbar Rodriguez. But those who love me, which is pretty much all of my inner and outer Mongolia, call me Estelle. So you can do that too. And a bit of intro about myself. I love the warm tropical weather of the Mongolian rainforests, the authentic Chinese food made in Sri Lanka, and of course, the non-violent and mostly pointless video games made by North Korean software developers. I hope to reveal Sartorini's true self through a series of 20 such pointless questions. Thank you. And next, please welcome Thermio Napati of the St. Augustine, Florida Napatees. Now, that's not the same Napati family connected with the disappearance of Jimmy Hoffa, is it? Um, so I talked to your advanced guys about this. I'm, you keep on calling me Thermio Napati. I am Michael Renfro, uh, the esteemed author. Uh, my latest book is called Cognivial Dynamics, an, Explor an Exploration and Extrapolation of Societal Incongruities. I had mentioned that to your advance guy, uh, but he kept on calling me Thermio. Uh, so I'm not quite sure if you got the right person, but uh, I am prepared to uh, field any questions on um, <clears throat> societal incongruities or um, um, heretofore unforeseen social dynamics uh, yet to be determined. I think that's clear. Okay. Well... <laughs> I'm excited. But before we get started with our questions, let's hear a word from our sponsor, shall we? And now it's time for the Vegas Trip with Joey Vegas. Cultured commentator Joey Vegas trips down the events of our times to their bare essentials as only Joey can. Hey, Joey, I'm feeling ennui about my role in an industrial society. What do you recommend? Well, I recommend maybe getting on your cell phone and going to maybe your favorite news website and say, you type in a question about space. And we're back. Our first question will be from Miss Estelle Henrietta, please. Okay, um, Stevie, if you had to choose between living in California in a beautifully large villa by the ocean, married to this gorgeous, intelligent, and kind woman with an inheritance of 10 to $20 million and an extremely profitable company that virtually funds itself, or 
living as an artistic genius in one of the most cultured cities in Europe, poor and virtually homeless with a Van Gogh complex and countless works of art that will be worth millions of dollars after your death, which one would you choose and why? Hmm. That's very interesting. I think I need a little of uh, a little energy and let me think. <sighs> mm, that helps me a lot. Yes. Um, well, I, I'm not sure I understand the question um, and I don't know what this van someone is or is van something. It sounds like a cheese dish. Is that like a quiche or cheese and eggs together? Because that's what it sounds like. And since I'm hungry, that's the only thing I can say. Now, getting back, Miss uh, Estelle Henrietta, Actually, I'm not Stevie D, and I'm not his evil twin brother, Cornelius, so please don't call me that. But how would he answer it? Well, you know, I, I don't even know the guy. I think I met him in a bar one night, and he slipped me his card, and I even lost it. So it's not really important who he is or our relationship. But in any, we don't have a relationship. Um, I would just say, I would just say yes. Yes, and um, I think that it's very important that children know this. Thank you. Next question, Mr. Uh, what's your name again? Renfro, Renfro. I keep on telling you guys this. It's Renfro. It's Michael Renfro, the author. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm on eBay. I, I'm, on, I'm on Amazon. You can just look it up. Um, but I'd like to piggyback on uh, the previous question in a similar nature, and that is this. Now, you, you be, being or not being Stevie D, have stated that your company's earnings as of the last fiscal quarter were 2.9% adjusted for inflation against the euro and yen. Given the aperture subterfuge of goods and services to input and output, how can you justify a tranche cap capital expenditure which has not been vetted by fiduciary regents? Please explain. I think all of America wants to know. Uh, well, I first of all, they didn't tell me there would be math on this episode show or whatever it is, this, this exam. So I wasn't prepared for that. And you know, in all honesty, who should be? If uh, you your bio says there's... you're a math genius. Oh, well, yes, that's right. So, um, uh, excuse me just a second. I think I'm getting my medications a, a little bit confused here. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, well, Stevie D would, definitely, because Stevie D loves that. He always has loved it. He always will love it, and uh, but he won't do it again. This is what I know just because of the metaphysics in the air, but I don't really know Stevie D that well if this is illegal. Okay. Uh, yes, you can't smell the metaphysics in the air. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Miss Henrietta, next question, please. <laughs> you know, uh, Stevie D, I mean, Cornelius or whoever you're claiming to be, uh, I don't quite know what the point of asking questions is anymore because I don't really know if you're understanding them. But anyway, uh, who are you really then? Uh, Nietzsche or Sartre? And, uh, and why? It's a great question. And I've always been, uh, I love both Scandinavian and Canadian cuisine. So I feel like I'm an expert to answer this question. Now, whether Stevie D would be, I don't know. I'm not Stevie D again. I'm Thaddeus Gibson Santini Mecklenburg. Uh, the second, I think my grandfather was the first and my father, they skipped him because he was kind of a loser. So I took my grandfather's name. Why, why not, right? Um, but I like it and I think Stevie D would like it and I think Cornelius would like it. Now, I have met Cornelius on occasion. Uh, I can't speak freely about how that is or, or anything like that. But uh, I know that he's disgusting. That's why I know that he's related to Stevie D. But I mean, I would never, you know, look at me. Do I look like a Stevie D or a Cornelius? No. So um, I think that's, that answers your question. You know, does Stevie D really, this character have to answer these questions? I mean, this is kind of stupid. Next. Mr. Uh, Renfro. 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 What about Thermio? I thought you were Thermio. I don't know who that is. It's. Uh, um, I know that I had a a, a mailman uh, named uh, Thermio from years ago. I think somehow your people got the name mixed up. But uh, I'd like to follow up and circle back to the original question, uh, Nietzsche Sartre. Uh, given that you are, uh, according to your bio, an expert in Hegelian philosophy. <clears throat> 
uh, and my question is this, as it pertains to the uh, current issue at hand, and once again, I'd like to circle back to my original question, which I submitted to you via MySpace regarding radiation in the Van Allen belt. How can you justify an analysis of the ionosphere while disregarding its properties as a counterpoint to solar light refraction? Oh, I, I, America, I read that. No, philosophically well, speaking, of course. Okay. Is that all? Is that all? Well, yeah. I mean, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no. That's cool. I got it. I got okay. it. We, so, I don't know. I read that. I read it in high school. I read it in junior high school. I read it in what comes before junior high school. Never mind. Cool. I read it and he went across the sea. Okay. And he had battles and wars and he met that thing with the eye and oh, it was wonderful. And he had all these women and it was really cool. And that's why I think I'm an expert that I can speak intelligently and appropriately and professionally and, of course, uh, capidextrously about it. Thank you. And uh, that's your, Rietta, your uh, next minute, that, That's your counterpoint to solar light refraction? Is that yeah. statement? Go get a cup of coffee, baby. Uh, Henrietta? Um, yes. Um, so the next is a bit of a situational question. Uh, oh. So Cornelius, imagine you're swimming in the Pacific Ocean on a beautifully sparkling beach with sand. You could gently walk on for miles. And of course, bikini-clad women in the distance, the noise of their long, tangling earrings softly tickling in the air. You're, of course, comfortably medicated on only natural organic substance, and the sensation of the warm summer water has you in a gentle state of ecstasy. But suddenly, the largest great white shark ever spotted on the West Coast in the last 50 years surprises you with its enormous mouth, jaws, and teeth about to gorge on your head, neck, throat, and most of your body. What do you do? Uh... My mother ne never really let me watch those types of movies when I was growing up because of fear that I would have some sort of psychological trauma that would last me the rest of my life. So I, I don't really know. I love the ocean. I love women. Um, no, I mean, I, I, I do admire and respect women completely in a professional way. I would never think dirty thoughts about women in bikinis on beaches with very large uh, ideas. Uh, because I just am not that kind of a person at all. But to answer your question, number one, I'm not Stevie D. I'm not Cornelius. And I'm getting a little tired of both of you trying to assume that somehow I have previous knowledge. I was just hired. They called me. They told me to come down. I came down. Here I am. I, I think I'm doing the right thing. I'm professional. And ah, 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 ah. Oh. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think so. Thanks. Uh, next question by, what's your name again, Mr. Michael Frederick? Renfro. Michael oh. Renfro. I've, okay. I've only yeah. said it about 100 times. You guys keep on giving, but okay. I'm going to circle back to that original question as uh, you, you, I mean, once again, you say you're not Stevie D, uh, yet you look like him, you dress like him, and through the amazing technology, I can smell you through the through the internet. Um, mm -hmm. Now, now, uh, I've been doing a little research, research uh, while we've been online uh, with your uh, background, and it says that uh, you are a film scholar that rivals Andre Bazin and Pauline Kael. Is this true? Yes. Okay, good. Well, I've got a question regarding uh, your uh, knowledge of uh, the cinematic arts, and that is this. You claim that the uh, film editing technique pioneered by Soviet-era director Sergei Eisenstein dismantles the aspect ratio ebbs and flows to that of Brazil's Cinema Novo movement from the early 1960s. So please compare and contrast your position and justify how such a counterfactual claim can be substantiated. I mean, I mean it's a pretty bold statement. What? Once again, <clears throat> compare and contrast your position and justify how such a counterfactual claim can be substantiated as it relates to Eisenstein's dismantling of the aspect ratio and the ebbs and flows to that of Brazil's Cinema Novo movement from the 1960s, which you claim to be a, an expert on, both, both movements. I got it. Peanut butter and jelly. Crunchy peanut butter, low sugar jelly, please. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
And, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, before I <laughs> humiliate myself with more intelligent answers to these ludicrous and frivolous questions, I need to run to the bathroom. <laughs> I drank too much pomegranate juice before we went on the air. We'll be right back after these messages from some people who are completely disgusted by Stevie D. Some. And now it's time for the Vegas Strip with Joey Vegas. Culture commentator Joey Vegas strips down the events of our times to their bare essentials, as only Joey can. Hey, Joey, are different peanut butters really different? Yes, and it would be the test of your time is to uh, the time that you are a child and you say, I don't like peanut butter and jelly. I don't like the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I don't want one. But you have to, at that point, is where you have to change it. And you say, yes, there are two different kinds. There is a flavor that is has peanuts in it, has actual, has actual peanuts. There's actual something there. And now we're back. Please, let's continue with another question for Miss Henrietta. Okay, so Mr. Not Stevie D and Mr. Not Cornelius, I guess I'm just going to refer to you as the guy with the tiniest ponytail. Um, and I hope your bathroom break was fine and you were able to relieve yourself uh, literally and metaphorically. So now we have a problem-solving question for you. If a train leaves Chicago heading west towards San Francisco at 70 miles an hour, and a bus filled with nuns from a convent in Baltimore leaves Kansas City at 4 p.m. When will both moving vehicles stop for lunch? Oh, oh, uh, can you repeat that question? Yeah, you can take your time. And listen, you may not use a calculator. So train uh, leaving Chicago, 70 miles an hour, a bus filled with nuns from Baltimore leaves Kansas at 4 p.m. When will both moving vehicles stop for lunch? BLT, BLT. So I did this before many times and it always comes out the same. It's the BLT and it depends on the mayo mustard combination. You don't want to put vinegar. You could put some black pepper, put some white pepper, white pepper. Have you ever tried that? White pepper would be great, great. Um, Chicago, San Francisco, they make the same. I've had them before. And it, and it really doesn't make any difference. But I thank you. And um, Thaddeus, please, Thaddeus. God, this is hard. It's not easy lying for Stevie D. <laughs> Next, uh, Renfro or whoever you say you are there, kid. Uh, so, okay. Um, still trying to figure out who you are. But when you say lying, are you referring to one's subconscious primordial inclinations to um, disregard the adherence uh, to traditional Jungian archetypes, or are you attempting an autospecific narrative as an inflection point to the standard cultural fulcrum? I think this is a fair and reasonable, should be a pretty simple question to answer, if you are who you say you are. Oh, I think I got a muscle spasm. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Oh, let me. Uh, uh, okay. Funny how it seems to happen with my questions. Oh my God! I think I'm paralyzed on the left side. I think you, that question gave me a stroke. This is not fair. Um, but, very right. balanced. Thank you. That's how I see it. Your okay. answer, please, 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 please. Don't speak. I need to think. I need to think this thing through. Um, Mm. Yes, okay, yes, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming to me, yes, um, and? well, I think that when I visited that temple in Japan, it did something to me, it gave me this sort of interplanetary cosmic feeling, you'll never be able to understand that because of your low intelligence compared to me but i just want to let you know i thank you i admonish you you are it's okay don't worry i still love you peace and love that thank was an you. incredible non-answer thank you um miss henrietta yes mm, the guy with the tiniest ponytail since you converted my numeric 
math question earlier into a food question. Um, I have now prepared a food question for you to make it easy for you. Peanut butter or almond butter? Explain without emotion and try not to have an emotional outburst. Oh, excuse me. Uh, need to take my medication, I'm sorry. Peanut? Uh, um, yes, one second. I, you know, I, I'm going to answer that question. I, 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 I have to, uh, my medication. Oh, oh, hmm, oh, oh. <sighs> Much better. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I, I, I think we spoke about that. I'm clear now. My head is clear. We spoke of that before. I said no jam in the sugar, or was it no sugar in the jam? Um, I love it both, you know, and I walked there, and it was like four miles. It must have been four miles, and, and then I left, and I came home. I closed the door, and everything was fine, so why do we have to worry about that again, you know? And people keep asking me. Um, I think they've asked Stevie D that because I have seen this somewhere. Uh, I saw it in uh, Newsweek or something like that, and it was great. And I, I thank you for that. <laughs> God, I don't know how much more of this I can take. I never realized just how difficult Stevie D's job and life really were and how many people depend on his meager efforts every, every day, every week, every month, every year. I mean, he's still an idiot. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Uh, Thermio Ren Renfro. What's your name? Once again, uh, Michael Renfro. I don't know who Thermio Napity is. You keep saying this. I don't know who that is. Like I said, I had the, the postal worker when I was a kid. But moving on, uh, I'd like to uh, kind of bring it back again to the uh, previous question um, as it involves math, uh, but it also involves geography and cooking. Now, if a five-seat European passenger car loaded with sour cream leaves Amarillo, Texas at 3 p.m. on August the 14th and a disabled veteran rides his bicycle sideways through the Midwest for two straight years, who will hand out the award to the Huron County Fair? In an isolinear cognivial uh, coagulative structure, of course, if you can please break that down. And not just break it down, but deconstruct it, please, into its constituent parts. I Do I really have to answer that? Saying. What? Yeah. How would Stevie D answer that? He couldn't answer that. He's not that intelligent. Do you expect me to be able to answer that? I mean, no, don't don't answer that. Don't say that. I, I, I'm smarter than Stevie D. I'm smarter than his evil twin brother, Cornelius. I'm an intelligent young man. I can answer this. It's not that difficult. It's easy. I've done it before, right? Go on. <laughs> Excuse me a second. I need a little medication to get me. Uh... Again? <gasps> yes. Oh, oh, that was good. Oh, who put, what did they put in this? Oh, okay. No, yes. You know, I think you no. are watching this. Uh, I agree. Oh, well, this is uh, nothing illegal or immoral. It's just, it's pharmaceuticals. You can have as much pharmaceuticals as you want. Again, okay. the sour cream. Yes. Where are you on One this? last question. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're wonderful. Go get some coffee. One last question. The broad, uh, what's your name again, sweetie? You know, it's you're not there. actually as bad looking as they said. Let's meet for a remote drink via Zoom after the taping. What do you say, huh, toots? Who said I'm bad looking? Uh, well, nobody did, really. Yeah, whatever. Uh, listen, guy with the tiniest ponytail in the world, I'm pretty disgusted by you. I don't know what I'm more disgusted by, your uh, irresponsible buffoonery or your inability to answer even the silliest of questions. But listen, much speculation has been given to my next and final question. It's not something I would have necessarily conjured up myself, mind you. So please try to answer in an intelligent, well thought out way. Okay, and don't drool on yourself like you did with my last question. Was Alfred E. Newman the Zodiac? Oh, I talked to Joey Vegas about this. I know about this. So Joey Vegas and I, we sat down, we had a conversation, uh, we spoke about it in length. He's documented all of this many times before. And excuse me. 
And I forgot, I'm out. Yeah. Uh, and, and he agrees completely. He agrees. And I think that the authorities have been notified and uh, we should have an answer and we should have a resolution very soon. Thank you. All right. Um, I can't take any more of this. Let's have one last comment from each of our guests. Our one of, uh, Henrietta, do you have anything to add to tonight's festivities, a closing comment maybe? Yeah, of course. Um, listening to your responses and with the power vested in me by the people of outer Mongolia and to a lesser extent inner Mongolia, I declare that you, Thaddeus Sartorini Mecklenburg, are the most net negative human being on this planet which means that if there was ever a one-way mission to Mars, you would be the first one considered to be sent away for good. So congratulations on that, and hope that day arrives soon. Ta-ta. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now, Mr. Thermio? Uh, yeah, I, uh, uh, it's Michael Renfro again. I don't know how this keeps happening. Um, but uh, um, I, I, you haven't answered any of the questions, and uh, I think if there's any children watching, uh, they're now uh, scarred for life. Um, so the only thing I have to say is I'll be performing my unique brand of existentialist librarian-themed comedy on the 28th of next month at Professor G Giggles' Old Time Laughaterium on Industrial Byproduct Way near the airport. And watch out for my latest podcast, Droning on Infinitum, on the Proud Boy Streaming Network. Well, that's that. Thank you, both of you lovely individuals. I love you both. You've just seen the best minds of my generation, and it wasn't pretty. These lecherous individuals who thought they could undermine my intelligence and retrieve false information, even though I am not even Stevie D or his illegitimate and immoral evil twin brother, who's actually quite a bit more attractive, intelligent, well mannered, professional, and proper of a young man compared to Stevie D, but um, what we have, what have we learned here? Have we learned that the world of human beings are generally respectable, honest, and intelligent people? No. Have we learned that brilliant minds think alike? No. Have we learned that no matter who answers stupid questions, King George III will still be laughed at in McSorley's old Irish pub in New York City? Well, actually, no, not that either. But we may have learned that providence will guide us to destiny, or that rainbows are always in a section of sky directly opposite the sun, or that uranium should not be put in our grandmother's tea, or that yellow snow does not necessarily contain the total requirement of vitam B vitamins, that is, for one day. So, I thank you all for joining us tonight. Stevie D will hopefully be back in another episode after his... Uh, stay in a mental institution. I mean, after his uh, health issues have been resolved. <laughs> Thank you and good night. And, and by the way, I just want to say to uh, Thaddeus, Thurman, whatever your name is, and that Henrietta, babe, you guys, you guys are great. You guys are beautiful. I mean, I think you're great. Stevie D probably would not agree. He wouldn't like you. Like, I'm not Stevie D. See, you can tell. Who else would put Stevie D down? right and still be here to talk so you guys are awesome by the way i better get and paid did you that. guys did you guys see my chest hairs um, i don't think anyone wants to see that oh uh, you sure you don't want to have a drink a, a zoom drink you know mm -hmm. after not God, a, no not bad looking not after that uh, oh about? well that was what the other people said i never said you were bad looking they said it you didn't have you're to not that bad. You really aren't. Well, you didn't have to communicate that back to me. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. I just, my mother told me to speak. Whatever was on my mind, to talk about it. So that, that's why I did what I did. Am I done here? Can I go home? <laughs>